Hey guys, welcome back to USMLE team. Today's topic is idiopathic intracranial hypertension, that is pseudo tumor cerebri. This is very important topic for USMLE examination. Guys, before starting this, I would request you to subscribe to our channel, that is all or none law. And let me start with this topic. See it. Pseudo tumor cerebri. Uh, here I will be discussing only import, important points what you need to know for USMLE examination. It is a disorder of unknown etiology, means the cause is not known, that predominantly affects the obese woman of childbearing age. So it's very common in women. The primary problem is chronically elevated intracranial pressure and most important neurological manifestation is papilledema which may lead to progressive optic atrophy and blindness. In USMLE examination, they will give the history of a woman obese and comes with a car accident and you need to diagnose it could be a idiopathic intracranial hypertension or pseudo tumor cerebri okay the pathophysiology as I said earlier is unclear most cases of intracranial raised intracranial hypertension idiopathic uh, intracranial hypertension occurs in young women who are obese very important points is women obese okay and eye problems a considerably small percentage occurs in a man who are otherwise healthy patients with higher body mass indexes that is BMI and recent weight gain are at increased risk if IIH presents in an individual who is not overweight it is necessary to rule out associated risk factors such as exposure to or withdrawal from certain exogenous substance example drugs systemic diseases like Lyme disease, disruption of cerebral venous flow, certain endocrine or metabolic disorders. So usually they will not give the history in a man but they will give the history in the woman obese and with a headache or vision problem. The other causes what you need to remember is anemia, chronic respiratory insufficiency, familial mediterranean fever, hypertension, multiple sclerosis, polyangitis overlap syndrome, psittacosis, chronic renal disease, Rett syndrome, sarcoidosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, thrombocytopenic purpura. Patients with idiopathic intracranial hypertension usually presents with symptoms related to increased ICP that is pap and papilledema including headache headache is the most common feature in a patient with I IH transient visual obscuration and diplopia due to unilateral or a bilateral abduction nerve sometimes they can ask which of the following nerve could be involved in uh, IIH to try to remember this abduction nerve maybe for USMLE step 1 Rarely, patients presenting with increased ICP with related optic nerve diadema may be asymptomatic. A non-specific symptoms may include dizziness, nausea, vomiting, photopsia, retrobulbar pain, pulse synchronous tinnitus. Okay, so what you need to do? So before starting with the before doing investigations, I would like to tell you about the symptoms of papilledema. The symptoms of papilledema, the patient will have transient visual, as I said, obscuration occurs in uh, most patients. Uh, it can last up to 30 seconds. That's very important. And there can be a progressive loss of peripheral vision in one or both the eyes may be noted. Typically, the vision loss starts in the nasal inferior quadrant and is followed by loss of the central visual field. And finally loss of color vision so these are the features important features what you need to know for uh, papilledema okay guys the other important points 
what you need to remember in the investigation is the best investigation is to measure the pressure opening pressure of CSF in, during LP that is lumbar puncture the CT and MRI will be normal okay uh, so these are the important points what you should know uh, let me s start with this uh, treatment the first treatment what you need to advise to the patient is to wait to lose weight that's the first step okay and the second step is if there's any offending agents like drugs you should stop taking that maybe oral contraceptive okay um, then uh, steroids can be started if there is no cure after doing these steps or repeated lumbar puncture can be done to relieve the symptoms or ultimately the surgical part that is we can place a shunt connecting ventricles and the peritoneum okay guys so thank you so much for watching my video on uh, pseudotumor cerebri thank you so much and if you have any questions please do tell us okay guys take care See you in the next video with me on USMLE team. Take care.